Hi there, Jason with Arbors Abroad and welcome to the channel. Whether you're here because you're trying to decide if doing a DIY van build of your own is something for you, or you're at the specific stage in your van build working on the walls and trying to insulate them, or the thumbnail just caught your attention and you clicked on the video. Regardless, I'm glad you stopped by. But if you have a specific question, I'm hoping to answer it because this video is a step-by-step -step guide on how to insulate your van walls using the Poly ISO foam board. So let's just dive in. First things first, rip out all the plastics. Take it down to the bare bones. If you bought a van that was already a skeleton, well then you can skip on to the next step. Make sure to clean around all the areas. Oftentimes the most sealed off areas of a van can get pretty dusty and filled with gunk where you don't want it to be. So wipe down all those cracks and crevices. This is important for when you get to actually installing the metal backed insulation foam board called poly ISO. Next, move on to cutting the poly ISO to shape and fit into the metal framing of the van. Heather did the tedious job of measuring out each piece drawing it on a paper to give to me and giving me an idea of what shape I was actually supposed to be cutting out of the foam board poly ISO. It definitely starts to take on a puzzle-like feel at this point. Today we are doing the wall insulation and it's so stressful. Not a fun day of filming, so we'll see how much stress you guys see. Anyways, it's stressful because it's a lot of like mixing little bits together and stuff doesn't fit and then redoing it and it's just shedding everything everywhere so definitely a project to do when you're in a good mood <laughs> anyways we have this much done here we've done a couple pieces down there and then this honestly we didn't even cut it to fit here but it fits perfectly here so we're gonna keep it there and then do one more piece there it's all just being pieced together and we found out that both of these are Foil. So it actually doesn't matter which side, this side or this side, goes out because they're both foil. Anyways, and so the reflective barrier, radiant barrier for the heat doesn't matter um, too much which way it's facing. Today we're finally back at it, doing the insulation in the wall and gluing it in. Great stuff expanding foam day today. <laughs> How much of a help is this thing gonna be? She's helping. Helping distract us. Yeah, hi baby. Oh yeah. At least she likes the van. She loves it in here. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Once a section is complete and it all fits together nicely, use expanding foam to glue it in place and stick the other pieces to each other. It would be much easier to fit in with Havelock, that lovely plush wool stuff, but that's way more expensive. Now thinking back, we probably would use the more malleable Havelock in the next van we build out just to save us a little bit more time. I think it would be much more worth it thinking back now. But this option is nice too and very effective. So. Stick around to the end for our real life experience with this installed poly ISO foam board. Areas that are hard to reach, you can use Reflectix, but do use sparingly as it has a much lower R value or the resistance to heat flow than poly ISO does. And it's not very easy to connect the two types of insulation together. And areas that are extremely difficult to access use an expanding foam. This part is essential as you are only as strong as your weakest link. So absolutely make sure to address even the most difficult van wall locations in the van wall insulation stage of your van build. One thing to note with those harder to reach places, you should definitely quadruple check that you are not interfering with any unseen electrical wiring, window attachments, gas reservoir cables, taillights, etc. There is a lot of unknown in guessing when spraying and expanding foam into holes or shoving things into awkward areas that you can't see. So this is your warning <laughs> to make sure that you know what's what and where things are actually located. Always consult your vehicle's manual if you're just not sure. Finally, after all the insulation is up and dried, add your paneling. 
This part was one of the most rewarding steps in our van build build out process because it finally started to feel like our metal shell of a minivan was turning into a camper van. Although the wood paneling serves a decorative and aesthetic purpose, it too serves a vital part in your insulation equation by trapping airflow and increasing that R value ever so slightly. We used large sheets of cardboard as a stencil for the wood panels just to minimize any mess ups when cutting the wood. Once you have your final pieces of wood paneling cut, just screw it in with self-tapping sheet metal screws and you're all done. Well there you have it. The van walls are all now complete as far as the insulation side of things go. You obviously still have sanding, priming, painting, and any other accessories like shelves, cabinetry, or even a cat scratcher like us that would go directly onto your van walls later on. But the bare bones of insulating your van walls in a self-converted van are now complete. Congratulations. Since the completion of the build out and up to the time of making this video, we have taken the van on a two and a half month long road trip across six states and covering nearly 4,000 miles. We have not seen a single inkling of our walls and framing struggle. And on top of all of that, we spent the time in temperatures as low as 18 degrees Fahrenheit at night, all the while staying comfortable inside until we had to go out and cook. So we can confidently say the van wall insulation and the way we installed the materials in the van wall itself is clearly doing a great job. We are certainly happy about that and can recommend this method of insulating your van walls this way. As far as commenting on how well the van wall insulation can do in warmer temperatures, we can't confidently say one way or another. We'll just have to wait and do a video on that when the time comes. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you found what it was you were looking for. Let me know in the comment section below what that was, or if you still have a question, leave it there too. Please give this video a like and subscribe if you're curious on how this Toyota minivan build turns out. I wish you luck in your van build journey. See you in the next one. Cheers.